I just noticed this video, especially uh, 1.3 million viewers. Um, I get maybe uh, a dozen viewers. Like they say, that's kind of like the story of my life. Who knows me? What have I achieved? Therefore, who am, who really am I? Um, let's get to specifics. The uh, video is good. The graphics, the support is real good. But uh, in my opinion, and I have been forced since the year of 2000 to be a critic and put forth, in my opinion, at least correcting putting forth what is the true facts. And that is, through the years, the centuries, and the decades, uh, each country is nationalistic. So each country wants to have its, say, uh, president looked up as the, the best president of any country. Uh, the best scientist of any country. That's uh, human nature understandable. But let's get to the true facts of who really did what. You have to understand that each country has experts to extract information as fast as they can. And then they'll try to even beat the other country sort of to to the punch as to who did it first, or at least the same time, or who's is better. This has been going on forever, and it still goes on today. Now, you have to understand that I have Doxy PhD company, and I present things from a philosophical, historical viewpoint. And from that viewpoint, you have to understand that each country, as I say, is nationalistic. So Einstein, if you get to what he really did when, based on what, Einstein and I revered the man, admired him, uh, supported him, defended him, but through the years, I have obtained true facts that he represented, is the polite way of saying he plagiarized others' work and ideas. You have to understand he worked at the patent office where at that time all of it, everything that was any good went to Switzerland, the main patent office of the world was Switzerland. He worked there. He was fluent in the language of German and Italian. And his duties were to read those scientific papers in those two languages. He had an uncle that lived in northern Italy who was an academic man. And he lived there. And he visited there. They were fluent in the Italian language. In the area of Veneto. Veneto is where one Olinto de Preto resided. This de Preto put forward two years before Einstein, E equals MC squared. Now through the years, I had from memory now, and it's been since 1975, I haven't really delved into science because I now call myself Preacher Doc. And uh, I say, believe me, I will not lie for any reason at any time. Uh, I became so disgusted at the plagiaristic, the, the power, power politics, the plagiarism, the immense hype, especially of Einstein, the ethnic hyping, that I said, no, I think the greatest challenge is that in the discipline of theology. How did we get here? Why are we here? What best to do? Now, getting back to Einstein, 
I studied him two years day and night, his work and his thinking. And I came to the conclusion that no one can decree that certain particle is the, it tra traverses this universe and at the ultimate velocity. That's the ultimate velocity. They say this universe will continue for another billion years at least, or two billion years. And all this time in the future, we're not going to find some particle that doesn't go at least an increment greater than the velocity of light. Let's get realistic. Where I decided that maybe I could improve, if you please, on Einstein's work, is that he said that you have to think irrationally in order to obtain the best answer of how this universe functions. And I says, rational man, having two feet on this earth, thinking rationally, should come up with a rational answer that will be valid now and in future centuries. And on that basis, I came up with what I, when I conferred with Einstein, personally in nine, April 1955. And I didn't converse with him to ask his opinion, to tell him, if you please, that I had, and I respected him and spoke real polite, of course. I suggested a modernization, if you please, of the Lorentz Einstein transformation equations. Namely, capital X prime equals capital X minus VT over the square root of one minus V squared over capital C squared, where capital C equals to or is greater than the velocity of light. I had a finite particle theory in which you obtain always finer particles towards the infinitesimal particle, which then maybe is the fundamental building block of the universe, and you get towards the unified field theory then. And he said he wanted to study what I am putting forward, and we conferred, and then he said he was told not to work with me. And I says, well, I expected that because they have me as an ideas man whose idea was to have the RAND Corporation. RAND stands for Research Army Navy Development, RAND. Have a PhD think tank. I have a PhD company. Do you understand then what I have achieved and therefore who I really am? Absolute truth. I'll take a polygraph, lot of detective test at any time, on any news desk, any editor's desk, but the results must be published. You see, because I did a lot of application of electromagnetic radiation. Now I'm fast forwarding. It's the fastest anybody in the world. I did the original work of the laser coherent beam. Absolutely true. And that is, in my opinion, number one in the world. So getting back to my old friend, Al, he said, are you sure? And I said, I'm sure, I'm sure. He says, like when? And I said, theoretically, I, I, I have broken the light barrier, in, uh, in my opinion. And he then took and I said, now I'm modernizing the Lorentz, your, you know, your Lorentz Einstein transformation equation. He says, he interrupted me. And then he would interrupt me and say, no. Now he would say it's only Lorentz's transformation equation, which it really was. So you have to understand that the hoopla, the ethnic buildup, so that, you know, they could be then the doctors, lawyers, and scientists. Einstein now I have proof is a plagiarist. It's Olinto de Preto, a professor Umberto Bartosi, B-A-R-T-O-C-C-I, has a book, Albert Einstein and Olinto de Petro, the true story of the world famous equation e equals MC squared. Absolutely proves I have through the years obtained various truths regarding Einstein's plagiarism. But I said number one is E equals MC squared. Now I have to say that Einstein is a plagiarist. He took his name off of the Lorentz Einstein transformation equation because he agreed with yours truly. Capital X prime equals capital X minus V T over the square root of one minus V squared over capital C squared. Capital C is equal to or greater than the velocity of light. CERN 
1955, he says, are you sure? I said, well, CERN, I think in 20 years, like 1975, will have increments of particles that will go faster than the speed of light. And once you go past that supposedly ultimate velocity, and if you think about it, if they're supposed to be proven his general theory of relativity, that light bends, all that proved is that light must have mass. It was Compton who proved uh, the momentum with a photon. And rho, it's, now they say P equals MVR, you put R to unity. The, if there's mass, you obtain momentum. If you have mass, you have gravitational attraction. It was Galileo who was the father of modern science and the father of gravitation. You say uh, 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 the father of gravity is uh, Newton. I have delved into all the scientists, researched who they really were, how they really thought and put forward their work. And Newton, you better understand, was a made physicist. I have uh, videos on this. They wiped them out, about 450 of them. Like they say, you dot the I's and cross the T's. Newton was a made physicist. Galileo was a physicist all his life. Newton all of a sudden became very smart and modernized. He kind of refined Galileo's work. Galileo was the father of modern science, and he had the inclined plane mechanical advantage and the acceleration, and when the acceleration what well, D equals one half AT squared when A equals 9.8 meters per second squared. That's a free falling body. And he realized this and proved it. He was the first to prove that except for air currents like a feather, if you, regardless of the mass or its shape, they fell at the equal attraction of G. Gravity is attraction. You have to understand that what Einstein would do is to take mathematics, which is an abstract philosophy, and he would work with uh, uh, equations in the field. In my opinion, thinking rationally, using the point of the center of the Earth as the you know center of gravity, the the field does not govern the source. You can have all kinds of mathematical abstract expression of what occurs, and you get into various mathematical uh, schematas, and you can come up with various answers and data. Fine. You're working with the field, but the field is the result of the center of the power of the attraction. Gravity is a force of attraction. It is not some kind of, and, and it looks like it, or actually you, you have graphically there, um, it, it looks like the, a metal framework or some kind of framework out there in space. And it warps. If the Earth is essentially a sphere and the field of force radiating from the sun and the field of gravity from the Earth is essentially a sphere. Where is all this warpness in space? Einstein uses it to ex explain how he uses mathematical schematics in order to get an answer of what occurs in that field. The field does not control the source. You have to think with your feet on the ground rationally and say gravity is a force. It is not some kind of space out there that warps. Galileo knew about the force of attraction. It was directly on their masses and inversely as a square of the distance. I went all the way to Ireland to the Academy of uh, Science in Ireland because Schrodinger went from Germany to Ireland and was at that prestigious academy to speak